This video is part of a series in which we describe how to implement a simple microcontroller core in System Verilog. In this video, I'll be going over the timing and the Verilog code for the call and return instructions. Let's begin by reviewing the call and return instructions. The call instruction is a 3-byte instruction. The opcode byte is followed by a 2-byte target address, and we'll take a jump to that address. We'll also be pushing a return address onto the stack. More precisely, we'll be pushing the address of the opcode of the instruction following the call onto the stack. Recall that our stack grows downward, and the so-called top of the stack is pointed to by the SP, or the stack pointer register. So if we assume that the stack pointer register initially points to this byte here, the call instruction will push two bytes, thereby decrementing the stack pointer by two, and storing the target address or the uh, return address in big Indian order as shown here. Now let's take a look at the return instruction. It's a single opcode byte, but we'll need two extra cycles to read two bytes from memory. It will read the two bytes at the top of the stack and then jump to the address given by those two bytes. So at the beginning of this instruction, the stack pointer will point to the most significant byte, and we will be decrementing, or sorry, incrementing it by two. Um, and so if we look at the timing diagram for the return instruction, we see that we have the two extra cycles that we use to read the two bytes from the stack memory, and we see that happening here. In this cycle here, we're providing the current stack pointer to memory as the address, and we're getting out the most significant byte. Here, we're providing SP plus 1 and getting out the second byte of the address, and then we're building the target address to jump to. So in this cycle here, uh, we're supplying the stack pointer and getting out the MSB value, and we will then be storing it in the MSB register on this rising edge here, because we'll need both of these in uh, this cycle here. We'll also be incrementing on this rising edge right here, the stack pointer. So the address that we feed in to the memory unit here is actually just the stack pointer, which has now been incremented. Then on uh, the following cycle, on the following rising edge here, we will increment the stack pointer yet again, and we won't be using it after that. So in this cycle, we've got the two bytes of the address, one in the MSB register and one just coming out of memory, and we use these to build the target address. So on the rising edge and in the next cycle, we'll be using that target address to read from the memory the opcode byte of the instruction that we want to return to. We will also need to update the program counter, so the target address will be incremented and that value will be stored into the PC on this rising edge. We're also just going to use the defaults to allow the program counter to be incremented during these two cycles, although it doesn't really matter what's in this because we don't use the program counter here. Now let's take a look at the Verilog code for the return instruction. So here we are in the fetch state. So if we scroll down to the code for the return instruction, we see that uh, we will be going into the execute state next and we are providing the stack pointer as the address to be read from in this cycle. And we also need to increment the stack pointer. So we're setting the stack pointer write enable line to high. And by default, this next SP value is set to SP plus one. So that's why it's just commented out to remind us that that's what's happening. Now, if we scroll down to the execute state uh, and look at the code for the return instruction. Uh, we see that we will be going into the uh, third state of this instruction. And we are also going to be updating the MSB register with whatever comes out of the memory. So here we are setting the write enable line and providing a next value to write into the MSB register. And again, um, we've incremented the stack pointer, so we just provide the stack pointer, the updated stack pointer, as the address to read from. And uh, then we 
increment the stack pointer the second time uh, so this code looks exactly like it looked before. And then if we scroll down to the execute to state and find the code for the return instruction, um, here we see that we are building the return address, that's the target address that we want to jump to, from what's in the MSB register with what's just coming out of the memory and that's the least significant byte and so we will provide that as the address in to the memory to fetch the opcode of the next instruction and we're also going to be updating the program counter uh, the default of just incrementing it is not right we need to take this this target address and then add one to it and that will become the value of the next PC now let's take a look at the call instruction this instruction will require five cycles. We need two to read the target address from the instruction stream, and we need two more cycles to store the return address on the stack. So we're going to be using the memory unit to do read, write, read, write, and read in this order. The call instruction's opcode is at address n, and the target address follows that in the next two bytes at addresses n plus 1 and n plus 2. So we will use n plus 1 for this read operation and n plus 2 for this read operation and these will be fetching the bytes immediately following the opcode. So first we'll read the most significant byte of the target address in this cycle here and we'll get it out uh, in this cycle and then we will store it into the MSB register on this rising edge here. And then in this cycle, we'll supply n plus 2 to the memory unit and get out the second byte of the target address. And then in this cycle, we can use the two values. Uh, those will be the target address. So we combine what's in the MSB register with what just came out of the memory to give us a target address. And that will then be loaded into the program counter on this rising edge here. Okay, so the program counter will be naturally incremented to n plus 1 when we're in the fetch cycle, and we will go ahead and increment it to n plus 2. So uh, at this point here, so we can use n plus 1 for this read cycle, and then we will not be incrementing it uh, on this rising edge or this rising edge. So n plus 2 will be available on this cycle here to supply to the memory unit to read the, the second byte of the target address. Now we uh, need to also be storing the return address into or onto the stack. And what is the return address? Well, if the opcode is in address n and the return and the target address is at address n plus one and n plus two, then the address of the instruction immediately following the call instruction is at address n plus 3. So what we'll do is we'll take the program counter, which is n plus 2 in these three cycles, and we will be incrementing it to get n plus 3. That is the return address. Okay, so we need to push the return address onto the stack. That, that is, we need to push n plus 3 onto the stack. It's a two-byte address, of course. So we need to push first its least significant byte and then its most significant byte. So we'll compute n plus 3 uh, by adding 1 to the program counter and then we will extract the uh, least significant byte and then we uh, to use in this write cycle here and we'll supply that as the data into the memory unit and then we will use the program counter plus 1 that is the return address and we'll extract the most significant byte from that and use that as the data to input to the memory unit. For this write cycle here, uh, we will ignore what comes out of the memory uh, for these write cycles. And uh, we will also be decrementing the stack pointer and we do that after uh, this write cycle. So at this rising edge here, we will load the stack pointer with uh, SP minus two to get the final value. Now once we've got the target uh, address into the program counter in the execute for cycle, we don't need to do anything special. Uh, the normal operation of incrementing the program counter 
going to the fetch cycle and reading from the current value of the program counter uh, to get the opcode to execute next will work just fine. So that is the timing for the call instruction. Uh, now let's take a look and see how it's implemented in Verilog. Here we are in the always calm construct and I wanted to mention a couple of signals that we have. Uh, of course we've got signals like uh, these that uh, we give default values to and in certain situations, that is for certain states and certain instructions, we may modify them down below. But then we've got some other signals such as SP-1 and SP-2 that I think of as constants. Uh, we're setting them here in these statements and nowhere else in this code are we modifying them. Of course they're not really constants, they have different values on different cycles. Of course if the SP register is modified, SP-1 will have a different value. So they can vary from cycle to cycle. But uh, okay, now I want to scroll down uh, to, here we are in the fetch state, so let's look at the code for the call instruction and we see that it just moves to the exec state. So that's what we would expect because here in the fetch state we're just incrementing the program counter and supplying the program counter to the memory unit and that's what we normally do so we don't have anything special. In the exec state we're going to do a few things. First of all we are not going to be incrementing the program counter and then we are going to be um, providing to the memory unit a write command that is we'll raise the write enable line and provide SP-1 as the address and we will provide some data as the input. We'll take the current value of the program counter and add one to it and then take the least significant byte. And um, the last thing we're doing is we're saving what comes out of the memory in, the, in this cycle into the MSB register on this rising edge here. So if we scroll down to the exec state here and find the uh, code for the call, we see exactly those things. First we're moving into the exec state 2 after this and then we are saving what's com coming out of the memory unit into the MSB register with these two lines here. Here's where we raise the write enable line. And uh, with this line here, we are not going to be incrementing the program counter. And then in the final three lines, we are doing the write operation on the memory unit. So we raise the write enable line. And as an address in, we supply the stack pointer minus one. Now remember that next SP, next PC is computed as PC plus one. So that's the value that we want to store. And here we are extracting the least significant byte from that. And that's what we will be writing into memory. Now if we look at the uh, next cycle, uh, that's a read cycle. And again, we will be supplying uh, in plus two, which is just the program counter. So that's the, the default. And um, we will uh, not be incrementing the program counter here. And so those are the things we need to do. So let's scroll down to, here's exec two. And if we find the code for the call, uh, we see exactly that. By We are moving into the exec three state next and we will not be incrementing the programmer, uh, the program counter. And the program uh, counter by default is uh, supplied to the read uh, operation. Uh, so that defaults, so we don't need to do anything special for that. In the exec three state, we're going to be supplying SP minus two to the memory unit, and we're going to be doing a write operation. And again, we'll provide the um, return address, which is n plus 3, and we extract the most significant byte. n plus 3 is just really the program counter plus 1, and we provide that for the write operation. And uh, we'll also be uh, updating the stack pointer by decrementing it by 2. And then finally, we'll be updating the program counter, and we'll save the target address, which is the 
value that's in the MSB register combined with the byte that just came out of the last read operation. So we will store that into the program counter. So if we scroll down to the exec3 state and look at the code for the call instruction, we see that uh, first we move on to the exec4 state next. And our default is to write the program uh, counter. And then we see that we're providing a value to write into it that's different than the default. And what is that value? Well, we take what's coming out of the memory and combine it with the value that's in the MSB register to form the target address. So here's where we set the program counter to the target address on the next rising edge. And um, for the uh, memory operation, we're going to be writing. So we provide a, the stack pointer minus 2 as the address to write to. And we supply the target address, and in particular the most significant byte of that target address, as the data into the memory. So we'll write the target address as the most significant byte uh, into the memory. And lastly, we need to decrement the stack pointer. So we will override the default uh, for next SP to be the stack pointer minus 2, and we'll raise the write enable. And then in the exec4 state, we see that there is no special code. The defaults all will work. So if we look back at the exec4 uh, cycle, uh, we're just incrementing the program counter. We're using the program counter as the input to the memory unit to read the next byte. That would be the opcode byte of the target instruction, which will come out on the following cycle. And then we default by going back to the fetch cycle. So that's why we don't need any special code for the uh, exec4 state. OK, that concludes our description of the call and the return instructions. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.